Hello everyone, my name is Mark and today we are going to be having a quick look at some equipment because uh, this week we are going to be photographing badgers. Okay, well, um, the first thing to do with wildlife photography, I guess, is to probably make sure the wildlife is actually going to be where you hope it's going to be. There is little point setting up a hide and everything else and taking all this equipment out with you and waiting hours and hours and end only for nothing to show up. So um, research is really, really key for this. So one of the things I'm going to be doing today is be setting up a camera trap for the badgers so I know exactly where they are going to be and indeed what times they are going to be around. Because ideally I want to have as much light as possible so I can photograph these things. I don't particularly want to be using flash, although you can get away with flash with some wildlife if you get them accustomed to it. But um, with these particular ones I'm going to be trying to just use available light. Uh, Okay, so um, the camera trap we're going to be using is one of these uh, little acorn camera traps. They're really small and neat. Um, this particular model does a VGA color video and infrared video as well. Um, it uses these black LEDs, which is great, so the animal doesn't know that it is being filmed. Um, and the trips work really well. So yeah, this will give me an idea over the next couple of days where the badgers are going to be and at what time they are going to be around as well, which would be most helpful so I can get myself in position uh, before um, you know, uh, they come out. The, uh, this little unit, you can fit a small stand on like this, which makes it very, very convenient. So what we will do, we will pop this thing down. We will probably set up, um, I don't know, a branch or something of which I will then cover in uh, peanut butter because peanut butter seems to be extremely good uh, for badgers. And they love the stuff, uh, can't get enough of it. So hopefully, yeah, out they come. The other thing that we will be uh, using is a hide and um, I am going to try and put the hide up this afternoon. Uh, certainly uh, I will do a demo of how the hide goes up. That should be quite amusing because I'm not very good at putting up these things. But at present um, the temperature out there is 26.3 degrees so it is quite warm and it is going up as well. So um, I might leave it until it's a little bit cooler. Right, the camera that we're probably going to be using for um, the shoot uh, of the badgers is a Nikon D500, which you can see here, attached to the Sigma 150 to 600 f5 to 6.3. Um, and I will also be using uh, a Nikon 70-200 2.8VR2 lens. Uh, yeah, so if they come in close, I've got this option, um, and also this is a lot faster. Uh, than this obviously which will help in the low light so yeah one of the lenses should be good enough for what we want um, depending on how close I can get I guess cool okay well it's um it's blooming hot out there it's 26 degrees and uh, I'm haven't been able to find any uh, peanut butter so we've got some hazelnut chocolate spread for the badgers delight so um, let's hope uh, they love the stuff and they will come out uh, we're going to go over to the field now where we're going to be um, hopefully photographing these guys and I will be putting out the camera trap. Okay, so let's go and have a look. As you can see behind me, um, all this ridge along here, there is a huge great big badger set and um, hopefully that set is uh, live and we've got plenty of badgers and hopefully some young ones in there as well. So uh, yeah, we're gonna go up there, we're gonna sort out the camera trap and uh, uh, get the old chocolate spread out and hopefully we can get them to come out and we can get them on film tonight. Right, well, hopefully um, we are going to get them coming in. We're going to go and uh, use some of this uh, hazelnut chocolate spread and uh, pop it over the top here, make it really nice and runny for them. They can lick that off until their heart's content. That's probably enough. And, uh, yeah, we're going to set up the camera now. Um, uh, yeah, so we're going to clear a little bit of area because these sensitive uh, triggers can sometimes be set off by uh, the grass that's blowing. There's a lot of that around here because I'm sneezing like a trooper. Uh, anyway, Oop. let's move this out of the way. So 
So what we are going to be doing now, we are going to be putting the, um, the camera trap onto a spike so we can dig it in the ground, even though the ground's incredibly hard. I'm just going to switch it to on. There we go. And pop it somewhere so it's got a clear view of sight. Something a bit like that, I would say, it would be ideal. So we have to put it in quite hard because um, we have a lot of deer around here and deer sometimes kick these things over. So that's about that. So just make sure it's roughly in line. There we go. That looks about right to me. All right, well, let's hope tonight we have some action and uh, we get to see a few badges. Uh, oh, oh. Whew, right, okay. Well, um, this in here is the hide that we are going to be using uh, for the uh, shoot of the badges. Um, so I'm going to do my best to put this thing up. It's not ideal uh, conditions for doing this sort of stuff. It's about 28 degrees at the moment and I am already frying. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll give that a go anyway. Um, uh, it's always a good idea to set these things up uh, a long time before you actually want to use them. The animals can then get accustomed to the, uh, the presence of the hide, get used to it being around, and you're likely to be a great deal more successful in getting the results that you want with the photography. So, yeah, here goes, and nothing. As you can see, uh, oh, as you can see without trying to chip over things, this is roughly how the uh, the hide is going to be. These are really, really good little hides. They're from a company called uh, Wildlife Watching Supplies. Uh, a chap called Kevin Wheatley makes them. Um, I've customised this one a bit with a zip, but I think he actually does that customising as well. So you can actually zip the back up and down. It used to have uh, ties. Um, what you don't want to be doing though really is ideally sitting in one of these things in temperatures of sort of, I don't know, 30 degrees. It's, um, it, they get pretty hot and this isn't a bad one actually in fairness, but uh, I certainly won't be sitting in it uh, anytime soon. I'll wait till the temperature comes down. Obviously in a hide it depends uh, where you're going to be sitting. Um, I have a chair here sometimes because I like to be sitting high up. Uh, but you don't have to have a chair, you can sit on the ground, you can sit on your line in front if you want to or whatever. But the really important bit about being in a hide is that you've got to be comfortable. Most hides are horrifically uncomfortable, in my opinion. This is on a slope as well. Obviously, it's all very sloped around here. Um, anyway, these are great little hides. I'm just going to grab the camera now and I'll show you around. Okay, there's the, uh, let's say, the back of the hide. We have um, a little side window here with a flap as well so you can actually sort of look out of that and see what's going on around you you never know what might be coming in from the side that you might want to take some photographs of uh, the main viewing area is at the front and um, slightly in shadow here and I'll undo these guys these ties this is really for keeping the uh, the thing watertight but as you can see pop that over there you have a lot of scrimmy from which you can poke a lens out. We've got another flap here. There we go. So you can clearly see that there. That's another flap where you can poke a, a camera out, or a lens rather. Uh, so it gives you quite a few shooting options. Um, they seem to be a pretty good size. You can get ones I think you can stand up in and all sorts, and probably ones you can get for two people as well. Didn't take that long to set up. Oh yes, there's another little window there as well. There we go. Just about seeing there. So you've got pretty good uh, ventilation as well as good access for viewing. 
um, it's a good bit of kit uh, and this is what we'll be using almost certainly with the badges but I say um, I need to go and sort of move it around a bit and uh, sort out where the badges are going to be um, so yes we'll have a bit of a look for them well, I uh, went back to retrieve the camera trap and unfortunately it was lying face down in the grass. So um, I don't know whether I hadn't stuck it in the ground hard enough or it'd been kicked over or whatever. Um, so yes, it's got to go back out again tonight and uh, I have actually bothered to go and get some peanut butter. So hopefully that will improve our chances somewhat. Uh, yes, so that's what we'll do. Um, I will leave you with a bit of footage that was shot three years ago of badges on this very camera at night. Um, so they were shot in exactly the same place, I think. Um, and yeah, hopefully they're going to be still around or indeed some of their youngsters will still be living up there. Um, many thanks for watching and do please check out the second part of this video for actual photography, I hope, of the badgers.